the Prime Minister's chief advisor, Ibrahim Khalil, joins us on the phone right now. Mr. Khalil, thank you very much for joining me. Do you think the Prime Minister will have these talks that he has called for and has agreed to, and will there be any meaningful result from them? Uh, yes, the Prime Minister is planning to have this uh, meeting tomorrow with representatives of the peaceful protesters. And in fact, uh, it's an important step on the part of the government after uh, you know, days of uh, uh, protest attacks uh, you know, on public uh, buildings, private property, police, etc. Uh, and the tomorrow meeting, in fact, is an indication and confirmation of the fact that the, the government has made a clear distinction between peaceful protesters and troublemakers from the very beginning. Right. I know that you've been saying that, but let me ask you this. The government also said that no police would go into Gezi Park, and, and they did, and they fired tear gas. And how are the people meant to trust the words from the government? Well, a little bit of clarification there. Actually, the police did not go in, as far as I know, did not go into the Gezi Park. In fact, I'm uh, looking at the pictures that you're showing. That's mostly from the Gezi Park area. People are, uh, are allowed and free to go around the Gezi Park. Uh, they cleaned up the, the Taksim Square. There are two places there. They are close to each other. Uh, the morning uh, interception was meant to clear up the square, uh, not the Gezi Park. That was announced, uh, and that, as far as I know, that has been the case since this morning. All right, can you be clear then? Are the protesters allowed to stay in Gezi Park? Because our reporter there, Arwa, Derman, Arwa Damon, basically was there when tear gas was being fired into the park. No, the protesters are there. In fact, uh, the, the governor and the mayor have also uh, announced this. The protesters are in Gezi Park at the moment. And they're allowed to stay? Yeah, they're allowed to stay. Uh, the police, as I said, uh, intervene in the morning to clean up uh, the Taksim Square. Because uh, as you have seen, uh, or maybe your viewers may not know these groups, uh, these are mostly very marginal, uh, some of which very illegal. Uh, uh, groups uh, that have tried to dominate uh, the scene uh, and occupy the Taksim Square. And if you had uh, had a chance to look at some of their uh, uh, placards and uh, their uh, banners, etc., you very clearly see uh, the type of message they are giving. It's not the, the peaceful protesters anymore. Uh, it's this other uh, second group which the government has distinguished from the first group. I know we've heard many people like yourself, government officials and members of parliament and certainly members of the Prime Minister's party, make this distinction and calling certain protesters radicals and extremists and terrorists. You know, there are many questions about why you're saying that and what do you exactly mean? Who are these people that you call terrorists? Why do you not accept that they're part of a, a broader and expanding protest movement? Well, it's, it's very clear. I mean, this is not any different from the methods that were used, uh, say, in the UK to disperse the crowds. Uh, in, in fact, today in London, a group of protesters tried to storm uh, the buildings of the G8 summit in London, and the, and the London police had to intervene to distinguish those from peaceful protesters. In fact, uh, the same thing happened in the Occupy Wall Street events. Uh, the same thing happened in Greece, in Spain, uh, uh, most recently in Sweden. Uh, the police obviously uh, have the mandate to establish public order and uh, peaceful protesters have been allowed to have their own demonstrations in the Gezi Park but others have, uh, as we have seen this morning, attacked the police with Molotov cocktails, with sticks, with uh, whatever they can get uh, and they're obviously not the peaceful protesters. So that's why we're making this, uh, this distinction. That's why the Prime Minister has reached out to these people to have a dialogue about the, the Gezi Park project, about their concerns, about many other issues. Uh, you have to make this distinction to have a meaningful dialogue. Uh, obviously, some of these marginal groups that have been attacking the police, public buildings, etc., you know, well, well, they, they are, I mean, anywhere in the world, they will not be considered peaceful protesters. So, Mr. Kalin, what is the government, what is the prime minister ready to give in his talks tomorrow, as you say, still plan to go ahead with these protesters. They've made several demands. What is the Prime Minister willing to give? Uh, well, of course, the message is very clear uh, that he is willing to have this dialogue. He's listening. Uh, he's going to listen to these people. And, uh, uh, and of course, I, I, I cannot predict the contents of the discussion tomorrow, but his message, as he's been saying over the last two days, that he's, he's willing to have this uh, dialogue uh, with the peaceful protesters as long as their demands are democratic. You know, calling a government uh, to resign is not uh, 
uh, sufficient by itself uh, for a government to go, obviously. This is an elected government. People have been talking about the government having uh, an authoritarian streak, the prime minister becoming almost a dictator. You know, that kind of uh, accusation is completely false, baseless. The, the Turkey ha you know, has internationally recognized elections. The most recent election was held in 2011. Uh, the prime minister was elected with 50 percent of the vote. But uh, the picture people are trying to, and some of the media, I have to say, are trying to depict uh, is as if uh, you have a dictatorship in Turkey, as if all life has come to a halt. In fact, uh, what you are showing even in your uh, screen is only a very, very small part of Istanbul. Uh, you know, well, we are getting... We are getting a, a, as, as wide a, a view as possible, and that's why we're very grateful to be talking to you. Let me ask you, will the government, will the Prime Minister agree not to, uh, you know, raise Gezi Park? Will he agree not to do this mall? And also I need to ask you about the alcohol issue, because that does worry mm -hmm. a lot of Turkey's young, secular people who are used to being able to have a beer in Taksim Square. Yeah. Why has this measure been passed? People are worried about a creeping uh, theocracy. I'm going to say it like that. Well, uh, Christian, again, I mean, all, uh, the, I, I think uh, uh, this is really uh, an expression of a great confusion about some of the measures that government has taken in recent years about, say, alcohol regulation. Uh, the, the alcohol regulation that was passed and that was approved yesterday by the president, in fact, brings exactly the same international standards that you have any anywhere in the world, whether you go to the UK or Germany or the United States. It's not any different. It's the same global standards that the world health organization has instituted for the purchase and use of alcohol. It's not any different. When you have the same you know, a regulation, say, in the UK, it's considered to be protecting the public from consumption of alcohol. When you have the same thing in Turkey, it is suddenly theocracy. It is suddenly authoritarianism. I'm, I'm having a hard time to understand this argument. In regards to some of these protesters, I have to mention this. You know, some of these people have been disrupting the public order, attacking. In fact, you can look at some of their uh, flags, etc. Among them are the famous Dehaç uh, Kalpeja, which is a leftist organization which carried out uh, the attack on the American embassy back in February, which killed a couple of people there. So uh, when you say these are all you know, peaceful protesters, we have to make this distinction. You know? Otherwise, uh, anybody who comes out on the streets to disrupt the public order will be treated as, a, as, as peaceful protesters. In, in regard so the question, to, you know, charge, Mr. Kelly, yeah, because go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, in regards to this charge of uh, authoritarianism, etc., again, I mean, this is really uh, a very meaningless uh, statement. People have been using this. Uh, I'm saying that, in fact, you have similar regulations. In the U.K., for example, when Prime Minister Cameron says that there will be zero to tolerance to all these disruptors, all these looters uh, and plunderers, etc., this is considered to be a measure of protecting public order when the police and other officials act in the same way in Istanbul, this is called authoritarianism. I'm trying to understand what, what's going on here. Is this a double standard or lack of understanding? Or maybe well, Mr. Kelly, I don't know. Mr. Kelly, you know, I'm not going to belabor this point, but you know that people are fed up with seeing journalists jailed, with seeing political space restricted. But I want to ask you one final question, and that is how are you going to... Uh, how is the Istanbul police going to clear Taksim Square while allowing the protesters to stay in Gezi Park? In other words, separate what you call troublemakers from legitimate protesters. How are you going to do it? Because the mayor says it's going to continue until it's cleaned. Well, Christian, it's not going to be any different uh, from what happened in the, uh, in, in the Occupy Wall Street event, say, in some of the parks in New York. Uh, or in London and other places. That is, uh, there are designated areas for peaceful protesters to have their protests. And those places have been designated. In Istanbul, it's the Gezi Park area. In Ankara, it's Güven Park, uh, which is very close to the office of the prime minister. And for any other uh, march, illegal demonstration, etc., obviously the police have to take uh, a measure. I'll give you one example. You said, you know, what is the concrete evidence? Last week, uh, on the second day of the protests, uh, on June uh, 1st, Saturday, uh, the Prime Minister ordered the police to leave uh, the Taksim area and the Gezi Park. 
and the police left this, this whole area at 4 p.m. on Saturday, and, every, okay. and we thought that this will, you know, calm things down. The same thing happened in, in Ankara. Givan Park area was designated for the protesters to have their peaceful protest. Everything was going right. fine until 8 o'clock in the evening. Suddenly, a group of people started to march on towards the prime minister's office in Beşiktaş Dolmabahçe, where you had uh, interviewed the prime minister, if you remember, a couple of months ago. And in Ankara, I was in the prime ministry building. The same group or similar groups uh, began to march towards the building of the prime ministry. And, of course, they okay. had to stop. Can you imagine a situation where uh, a, a group of uh, people with sticks and Molotov cocktails, etc., marching right. towards the White House and allowing these people to uh, attack public property? On that note, so the police on that note, are, Mr. Are Kelly, trying, let me just finish. Uh, yeah, I, I finish. Uh, uh, the police are trying. Uh, Mr. You know, Kelly, we've got to stop. Uh, to the show's yeah. over. Sorry, Mr. Kelly, thank you very much indeed.